Have you ever wanted to create your own children's picture storybook? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you through a few steps to be able to hopefully get you to create a book just like this one, like I have. Now, my name is Romney, and thank you very much for joining me on my YouTube channel. My channel is all about building, creating, and scaling your self-publishing business. And in this particular video, I'm going to show you some of the steps that I went through to create my own children's picture storybook that will hopefully help you to create your own. Because with the ever-growing market of Amazon KDP, a lot of people are doing no-content books and even low-content books. But if you can create your own children's picture storybook and create that form of book, you'll really create a gap between those people that are doing the low and no content books compared to the children's picture storybooks where there's so much opportunity that's available right now. So let me run through um, the steps and it is probably going to be a 25 to 30 minute video but remember there is some in really, really important steps that you'll see throughout this video that were really, really going to help you. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you exactly something that you could potentially use that will even help you scale even more and gain the skills and knowledge that will really help you to develop your own children's picture storybook. So hang around to the end and I'll show you what that is. So let's get into this lesson now. So let me start by going through some of the different steps that we're going to be covering in this video because there are some things that you may or may not know about. If you've done low content books before, some of the steps might be familiar to you, but there's also plenty of things that you might pick up that will be important to authoring and publishing your own children's picture storybook. So let's get on to what the steps are that we're going to be covering in this lesson. So let's run through the seven key steps that we're going to be covering in this video. There are going to be some that we go over fairly quickly, others we might pause a little bit and discuss in further detail. But firstly, we need to identify our purpose. Number two, creating your framework. So we're looking at our book research, creating a manuscript. Next one is your title and subtitle creation and using the right keywords. Number four is formatting and structure, so designing a book, the type of book to create. Number five is the actual design, so everything design. Number six is the upload process, so just ensuring you upload correctly. Number seven is the marketing and advertise, so ways to advertise your book and ways to market your book. So let's now move on to step number one. So the first step you need to think about the journey ahead is your purpose for creating your and publishing your book. Why is it that you want to publish it? You know, why self publish to begin with rather than going down the traditional route? So, you need to start to consider what the pros and cons are against these two things. You also need to think about your pen name. What is your pen name going to be? You don't have to use your own name. You can use a publishing name. You can use a name that you come up with that you might like to create a series out of. So this is the first step for you. You need to really identify that reason behind wanting to create your book. Um, and you also need to think about what passion do you have behind creating that book? The passion will come out. If you create a really good children's picture storybook, that passion will flow out. But if you don't have a lot of passion towards that topic, the writing style might change and even the way you put the book together may not really ooze that enthusiasm, that motivation to creating that book, which is going to make a big difference to um, children's lives or a child's life. So that's step number one as part of the journey ahead. And so I mentioned, what is your purpose? Why do you want to create the book that you are thinking about as a children's picture storybook? You need to think deeply about what's going to be important to you because it is different from creating like a normal low content book or a no content book where you just suddenly start to do a whole heap of niche research. Yes, there's plenty of research you need to do still as part of a children's picture storybook, but it is a different 
kind of feeling you, you want to generate when you do create these kinds of books because you've got to create a manuscript that is engaging you're going to have illustrations that are engaging for children and you've got a different audience than an adult audience potentially that you might have been creating books for before so really come up with your purpose for creating and publishing your book that is definitely step number one so when we're looking at whether we should self-publish or use a formalized publishing process well let me give you three things that is the key difference between self-publishing and publishing with a major publisher number one you have greater control over the process including the design and the storyline number two you can make a greater return on monetary wise on each sale and number three the timeline to create is significantly reduced so when you and I've gone through this process myself when you are with a publisher they do take control of your cover and the design side of things and you might have to revise the storyline of the manuscript 20 or 30 times maybe more now you can make a greater return on each sale because when you're with a formal with a formal publisher you may get a very small percentage so when I published a book Many years ago with a publisher, uh, I was getting around about 25 to 30 cents per sale. But with books I create now, it can be anywhere up to 12 to 15 dollars per sale. So there is a significant difference in the timeline wise. You can create a book within the week. If you're using a publisher, it could take anywhere between six and 12 months for that big, for that book, sorry, that book to appear on the bookshelf. So there's some different things you need to consider if you are looking at self-publishing your own children's uh, storybook. And so what are the five key steps that you need to really take in consideration when you're creating your book? Well, firstly, you need a comprehensive plan and structure. It's called your framework. So you need to think carefully about that, what that plan and structure is going to look like. Secondly, you need a story that is engaging to your audience, particularly with children. They need to be engaged. Do you want to don't want to lose them um, with too much information. Uh, you also need to have illustrations or uh, pictures that are really engaging for them. You need to have researched your topic so that you actually know there is actually someone that's looking for that kind of book. There's no point creating a book if there's not going to be any need for it. Number four is including the key elements such as your uh, cover, your description, and your story flow. So there critical elements and number five which is a big one is created with passion and as I mentioned from the beginning that will be something that really comes out if you can create a really engaging and fun story uh, children's picture storybook for your audience so what's involved with creating your framework well with the course I've also created around this topic I go into detail in regards to the research and finding your book idea I also look at the Amazon niche research and, and ways to be able to make the most of that process. Then creating a story, that is definitely part of your framework. You need to create that story and it might be um, 500 words, it might be a thousand words, but you need to find your sweet spot when it comes to creating your manuscript. You need to be able to get the story across to your audience or to the child that is reading or getting that book re uh, read to them. Next one is creating your written manuscript. So you need to work through that process of getting all that documented down. And that can take days, weeks, months um, to get that manuscript right. So this plan is even more important. Next thing is you need to make sure you've done your grammar and spelling check and you might want to use programs like Grammarly to help you with that process or even get your book uh, formally edited by a editor. So that can be expensive process. You might want to start with Grammarly to begin with. And then finally, you need to determine your page count and that will dictate how you put your cover together as well. And when you're doing your calculations, you need to know how many pages it's going to be. And that will be made up by the length of your story and the number of illustrations or pictures that you're going to have in your book. So that's number two, is um, creating your framework for your book. And number three will be creating your title and your subtitle.
So your title and subtitle needs to be something that will firstly uh, give an indication of what the story is about. Both the title and subtitle will include keywords that people or their customers are searching for, and those keywords will help your book to rank. Now, you need to spend some time to get your title and your subtitle right, because there are different um, things you need to consider around your title and subtitle to make sure that it's going to be something that uh, doesn't look like it's keyword stuffing, that flows nicely, but pretty much sets the tone for your book. So get your title and subtitle right. That's step number three. Now at this point, I would definitely create a checklist to take action. So firstly, you've designed, sorry, you've defined your purpose. Uh, you've completed your research on a potential book topic. You started to create an, uh, your book structure and your format. You've commenced writing your manuscript or your story. And then you've also created your title and subtitle. So next is the format and the structure of your book. So let's get into that um, part or that component now. So number four, the format and structure. This is the point in time where you do need to start to consider what kind of book are you going to be creating. Are you going to be creating a hardback, a paperback, an ebook, or maybe a combination of all three? So these are the things you need to start to consider when you start to think about your book and how your illustrations are also going to fit into the structure of your book. And that might also... Um, come to, sorry, this is the point in time where you might come to think about the size of your book as well. So let's move on to that. So when you go to Amazon KDP, there are quite a few different choices in regards to sizes for paperback, but not so for hardback. So if you're looking at doing both paperback and hardback, it might be worthwhile looking at at what options you've got. So with a hardback, there's only approximately, or there's only five different options for sizing you can choose from. So if you are looking at just doing paperback and ebook, then that's going to be fine. But if you're looking at a hardback, then you need to think through that as well. So you think about the audience you're creating your book for. Does it need to be a big 8.5 by 8.5? Maybe a smaller book is going to be fine. But just think through the sizing of your book and how that is going to correlate to the story you're creating. So step number five, the design, a lot is involved in this section. So firstly, you're considering the overall design of your book. You're looking at your illustrations and images. Are you going to be outsourcing those or doing them yourself or a combination of both? You're creating your front cover during this process and your back cover. Uh, you, you can also start to create your hardback, your ebook, and your paperback version, or paperback version of your book. Then you've got your formatting. You need to make sure you're formatting it correctly for upload to Amazon KDP and even other distribution partners or channels like Ingram Spark. Then you've got your interior to create. You're writing uh, your description because the description will really feed into helping customers to get an idea about what your book's about. And then you need to be publish ready. So all your right formatting needs to be together. You need to have got all that information together so that when you do go through the upload process, you've got all your files right, you've got your description ready to go, you've got your main seven keywords or your back-end keywords for Amazon KDP. So they're the kind of things that you need to get together as part of the step number five, which is the design. So as I mentioned, you've got a couple of choices when it comes to illustrations and images. You can use an, uh, an illustrator, so you might go to places like Upwork or Fiverr, freelancer.com to find your illustrator and they can then create the illustrations for you. But you need to make sure that you're using the right uh, uh, descriptions so the illustrator know exactly what you what you want as part of your um, illustrations for your book. So their considerations. And then if you do want to go down the uh, pathway of getting different uh, images, that you're not using the Illustrator for. You just need to make sure that you have the rights, commercial rights to use those images. So that's an important part of this creation process. So once you've got your illustrations ready to go, 
It's bringing those ideas to reality and getting your formatting of your book right. So these are some of the illustrations that I had done for my recent book. And the illustrators done a great job bringing my ideas that I had in my mind onto paper. And therefore, I can now go ahead and create my book. Now, the next main step as part of the design is creating your front cover. So you should have chosen the kind or the size of the book cover that you want to create. I've chosen an 8.5 by 8.5 for uh, for my book here. So that was the right size for me, for me to create that book with. And you might select another kind of size. It might be a size that is better for your audience. So think through that process. And when you're creating your front cover, you might like to use Canva to create it. You might have another software that you might like to use. My preference is Canva. I find it nice and easy to use, and that's what I used uh, to create my Ollie and Ted book. Uh, so that's one idea you can do. Then the next thing is to also look at creating the back cover for your book. And so the back cover will include maybe some images from your book. It'll have a bit of description about your book as well and getting your front and back cover together and then formatted correctly is the next major step that you need to do um, as you continue. Now, one of the things that might stop you from putting that together is not knowing your page length at this point in time. Now, you can format or get your, your file ready to go later on. As long as you've got the images ready to go for your front and back, that's fine. Bring it together can actually happen later on um, once you do know your manuscript size or your storybook size. But if you do know it already, you can go ahead and create um, the file for your front and back cover using Canva or BookBolt uh, as examples. And as I mentioned, formatting your cover um, is going to be an important step because if you don't get that formatting right and the calculations correct, then you could get the rejection from Amazon KDP or Ingram Spark to say it doesn't meet their um, certain standards. Um, so make sure that you do go through that process correctly because it's just so annoying when you keep getting rejections because it doesn't meet their requirements. So uh, that's one major thing you need to do and just do it carefully and make sure that you get that element right. And now the next major, major step is actually creating your book interior. And that can be a really fun uh, element to do. And when I was creating my interior, uh, it, um, it came together really, really well. And as part of the course I've created as well, I'll show you exactly the steps that you need to do to create a really engaging interior and format it correctly. But that is one very important step you need to do. The cover in the interior will obviously make your book. So get that right and use the right formatting practices when you're using a software like Canva and just ensure you have the right calculations um, and you know pretty much what number of pages you're going to be creating as well as part of your structure. Now, the, uh, the next step after that is writing your book description. Now, your book description is something that will really need to engage the customer. It needs to entice them to go to the click and buy now button and purchase your book. And without having a good description that really uh, tells a bit about the story and the features of the book, then you might be uh, letting sales go and you don't want to be doing Amazon advertising, for example, and not have a great engaging description because there might be people that click on your book because they like the front cover, but the, engage, the, the, sorry, the description isn't engaging enough. So that is something that you need to work hard at getting right to make sure it's structured and formatted correctly as well before you upload it to Amazon KDP. Now, once you have your front cover done, your back cover done, your manuscript done, and you've been able to put them in the right format, the next thing is to make sure that you have a template that you've got all of your elements ready to go. So you've got all your files, your description, your keywords, uh, your author name, your title, your subtitle. All that needs to be put together nice and neatly on a document and in a file type so you can actually get that ready. So the being published ready is the next step so that you can actually get everything ready so that you can... Um, when you go to Amazon KDP and you're uploading during the process, everything's easy to get to. Everything's nice and easy to just copy, 
paste it into the fields when you're going to Amazon KDP and you do know that you have the right file types uh, for uploading to Amazon. So as I mentioned earlier on, there are different format types you can choose from. So you can do a paperback, a hardback and an ebook. But as I mentioned, do remember that hardback only have five different uh, trim sizes you can choose from. There are plenty of paperback sizes and ebooks are quite easy to do. But you can actually make sure that if you do all three, you're actually giving yourself more of an opportunity to sell more books. And that is going to be something that helps you out because it will create more brand awareness. You'll get more income from your books. And there might be other platforms you can upload your books to as well. For example, an ebook can actually go to a platform like Draft or Digital, and they can actually uh, use your ebook um, and put it on their platform, and you can get more sales. And you can also put an ebook onto uh, Ingram Spark as well. But that's something you need to consider when you're doing the process. Now, if you do have a hardback that is in a format that uh, Amazon KDP don't allow, you might like to choose a platform like uh, Ingram Spark to do that for you. So that's an alternative if those five trim sizes don't meet, meet your specifications. So step number six is the upload process. So you need to make sure you have your Amazon KDP account organized. If you're using Ingram Spark, then you'll need to have purchased an ISBN and you have all your file types, sorry, yeah, your different file types for your cover and your manuscript ready. And if you do have the opportunity to to create an ebook or a hardback, you have those file types ready as well. So that's the step you now need to go to um, as part of creating your children's picture storybook. So step number seven, if you have a launch plan, that is going to be fantastic. If you don't, you need to create one and it needs to involve or include things like marketing and advertising. Now, one of those steps that you might like to include could be Amazon advertising. So what are the benefits for Amazon advertising if you haven't used Amazon advertising before? Well, firstly, Amazon ads, they can drive initial sales to your book and getting the first sales on board in the first 30 days, as many as you can, is such an important part of getting onto the algorithm of Amazon and getting your book lifted up the rankings. Next one, increases the relevance for your keywords. Again, that does help with your keyword ranking for Amazon. Increases reviews um, due to the sales. So without the sales, you won't get reviews. And without um, being able to generate those sales, you might be struggling to get those reviews happening. So that's where Amazon ads can help too. And then marketing via Amazon ads is a direct way to the customer. It's not as if you're using something like Facebook and then they need to have an account, they click on the link, then it takes to Amazon and then they need to buy the book. If they go straight into Amazon and they see your ad, they can go through and purchase it immediately. So that's a real advantage of using Amazon ads. And there are other ways you can market your book uh, as well. And so you need to think through where are people going to be looking at it? Is there an opportunity to get into Facebook groups onto uh, or through um, Instagram, uh, through LinkedIn? Uh, there are different platforms you can go to. You need to think carefully about what is the best strategy to market your book. You can't expect that once you load your book that it's going to be taken care of by Amazon. You need to invest some time and a little bit of money to get your book uh, in front of customers so that you can actually get an opportunity to sell it. So as I mentioned, you need to have a launch strategy to launch your book, and it might be a 10-step process. Think through what needs to happen from even uh, negative day 10 from when your book is getting ready or you're uploading your book to the day it goes live. What are those next steps that you should be taking to get your book noticed, to make sure you're marketing the book, advertising that book correctly and getting all those strategies in place. Think carefully about that. Uh, in the course I've created, there is a launch strategy that I provide. So hopefully that would help you if you don't already have one that you've created yourself for any books that you're publishing. Now, if self-publishing isn't your thing, uh, then you might like to consider the traditional publishers. As I mentioned at the very beginning, those five things that were going to make it 
more challenging for you to maybe go through the uh, publishing side of things like through a formal publisher there are many many publishers that do accept manuscripts and in the course I provide a number of those different publishers that do accept uh, manuscripts but it could be something that you might like to try with this book that you're creating the first book you're creating or it might be further down the track you might like to start self-publishing to begin with see how you go and you might like to have a couple of books with um, major publishers and then you might have your own books that you self-publish so that's a consideration you need to make maybe self-publishing is going to be too much for you and you'd rather put it in the hands of someone else to do and you don't mind for giving up some uh, a larger component of your revenue to someone that's going to take care of everything for you but these days even publishers expect you to do some form of marketing and when you do submit through a manuscript they actually ask you if you do have a social media following or if you have um, some suggestions of being able to market and advertise that book so be prepared for that if you still decide to go through the publishing or the formal publishing route with your children's picture storybook and so you need to develop your final checklist your cre you're creating your action plan so what are those steps step through each of those points get yourself well organized and develop that action plan because without action nothing will happen so to develop that plan use this video or use my course to create the step plan or the action plan that you're going to be using to create your book and you need to make sure that you start to implement your checklist because it's much easier to develop that flow and action points if you do have one now, if creating a children's picture storybook is something that you'd love to do, well, I've created the ideal course for it. I've got over six hours worth of content in this course. There's over 40 different lessons, and it's available on different platforms as well. And the value is unbelievable. It's about $400 plus worth of value, and so you're getting an amazing deal. And the links um, are available in the description of this video, and you can choose one of those links that will actually get you to the course to be able to get it but it will just make such a difference to your publishing providing that um, gap between what others are publishing or what you can now create by doing these children's picture storybooks and there's so much opportunity available right now to create them so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed the outline of how to create your children's picture storybook and if you do decide to, to uh, go through with the course i look forward to having you as a student so until my next video I look forward to seeing you then